Welcome back to Monetized History, I'm Daniel, and today I'm going to talk about Arturo Prat, Diego Portales, the first Chilean naval squadron, and the Chilean 1981 50 peso banknote. This series of notes was introduced in 1975 when the second peso replaced the escudo. The escudo fell victim to hyperinflation brought about by the presidency of Salvador Allende and the interventions of foreign governments. Although the inflation had moderated a bit after Pinochet took power in 1973, the average annual inflation rate between 1976 and 1980 was still over 88%, which meant that the 1981 series would be the last 50 peso note produced. Today, 50 Chilean pesos are worth about 7 cents. But despite its low face value, it's still sold on eBay for between $2 for a heavily circulated note to over $35 for an uncirculated replacement note. As far as security elements go, this note has UV reactive ink highlighting design elements on the front and revealing the denomination on the back, and a watermark of 19th century Chilean politician Diego Portales on the left of the obverse. Diego José Pedro Víctor Portales y Palazuelos was the de facto ruler of Chile from 1830 until his death in 1837. He was a very unpopular ruler of a conservative authoritarian government. During the War of Confederation between Chile, Argentina, and the Peru-Bolivian Confederation, Portales was taken prisoner by a Chilean general opposed to the war. When the insurrection failed, Portales was shot and killed. The Chilean public blamed the leader of the Peru-Bolivian Confederation for orchestrating his assassination and rallied behind their government, turning Portales from a despised dictator to a beloved martyr. The main feature on the front of the note is a portrait of Agustin Arturo Prat Chacón, based on a drawing by Chilean illustrator Luis Fernando Rojas. Arturo Prat was a captain in the Chilean Navy who's best known for his stand against the Peruvian Navy during the War of the Pacific. Earlier in his career, he was an instructor at the Chilean Naval Academy as well as a lawyer. When the War of the Pacific began in 1879, he was sent to blockade the then-Peruvian town of Iquique aboard an old wooden steam-powered warship called the Esmeralda. The Peruvians sent the legendary naval commander Miguel Grau to break the blockade. Grau's forces vastly overpowered the Chileans, but Pratt prevented Grau from using his cannons by placing the Esmeralda between Iquique and Grau's ship, the Huascar. Being unable to effectively fire upon the Esmeralda, Grau charged it instead. And although the Esmeralda's cannons were unable to penetrate the Huascar's armored hull, Grau's 300-pound cannons literally tore the Esmeralda to pieces. Pratt gave the order to storm the deck of the Huascar in an attempt to capture the boat, but in the chaos of the battle he was only followed by one person. Both of them were quickly shot by snipers. The remaining sailors aboard the Esmeralda attempted to storm the boat and recover his body, but they were cut down by the Huascar's Gatling gun. By the end of the battle, nearly 75% of the crew of the Esmeralda was dead. Grau had a reputation as a man of honor, and both friends and enemies called him the Gentleman of the Sea. He gave all of the Chilean dead an honorable burial in Iquique, recovered Pratt's possessions, and mailed them to his wife along with a letter expressing his condolences. When the public learned of Pratt's death, they enlisted in the army and the navy in droves. So even though Chile lost the Battle of Iquique, because of Pratt's sacrifice, they would go on to win the War of the Pacific. The reverse of the note features an engraving of a painting by Thomas Summerscales depicting the first national squadron of Chile on their way to liberate Peru from the Spanish in 1820. Both this painting and the portrait of Pratt on the front of the note were engraved by prolific Spanish engraver José Moreno Benevente, whose work can be seen on many Chilean banknotes and stamps from the 30s to the 70s. The ship in the foreground is the O'Higgins, which was the flagship of the liberating fleet. Less than a year after its departure, the fleet landed in Lima and declared Peru's independence. By 1826, the last vestiges of the Spanish Empire would be driven from South America by the Chilean Navy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. We'll be back next week, and don't forget to like and subscribe.